Would you rather be stuck in a forest with a man or a bear? Uh, man is scary. Um, with a bear. Well, I've heard about bears. They don't always attack you, right? Unless you like f with them. So maybe a bear. <laughs> Prob depends what man, but probably a bear. A hundred percent a bear, which is like terrifying to say, but definitely a bear. Some men are very scary out there. A bear. <laughs> Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Um, you know, at this point in time, there are so many ridiculous stories and so many things being shared um, in the mainstream media, but also the algorithms that TikTok is sharing and uh, kind of what people are sharing on social media and which ones are elevated and, and are, are being shown to the most people. There's part of me that's starting to wonder, like, is this a psyops? Is this like a psy war that's going on that is meant to make the next generation crazy, make, make the next generation um, undateable, to, to purposely drive a wedge through men and women uh, to the point to where we don't, we don't want to have families and we don't want to date each other. Um, I, I have two different directions I want to go with this today. One is the results of all of it, which is birth rates falling off a cliff and uh, people not dating, people not marrying, people not, uh, people just not pairing up anymore. And, and I, I think it's a, like a legitimate problem. But in the same token, women have become so unbearable that men don't want to even share a home or date or, or even sleep with them anymore if you talk to the youngest generation. So that's one, one thing I want to talk about. This is the other direction I'm going to talk about, which is the stupidity, the, the craziness. And I swear, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I really do. Um, in the intro, before my, my beautiful face popped on the screen, I played this video for you, which was a bunch of women saying, would you rather be stuck in a forest with a man or a bear? And the results are not surprising. But we have to ask ourselves, are they doing this for clout? Are they saying this to, to pass a message that they don't need no man and man, men are bad? And has feminism gone so far as women will just lie and they know they're lying by saying, no, men are more dangerous or, or bears are – men are more dangerous than bears. We need, to, we need to stay away from them in society. And they know it's a lie. Or has it gone so far that women actually believe this? That they actually believe, like, if they were going to sit in a room with me or you while at, a, at the dentist's office or you're, you're, you're in a, a park hiking and you come across a man, is she going to pull out bear spray and spray you and scream and go running off? Well, probably that's a bad example. But Or would she legitimately be more afraid of a bear? And this is just virtue signaling. I don't know anymore, honestly. I don't know anymore. Um, I want to read this. First, I looked up psychological operations, uh, which is a sigh up, and I made my thumbnail. And then I started reading into it a little bit more. And I said, you know, I don't think psyop is quite, is quite accurate. What I think is actually accurate is a psy war, psychological warfare. Um. And I want to read down through this. Tell me if this doesn't sound like what's happening to women today, right? And the media and the prop, uh, the the um, the propaganda against men, against white people, against straight people. Tell me if this doesn't resonate with you. From Wikipedia, psychological warfare, psy war, or the basic aspects of modern psychological operations has been known by many other names or terms, including military information support operations, or MISO, uh, PSYOPs, uh, hearts and minds, and propaganda. The term is used to denote any action which is practiced mainly by psychological methods with the aim of evoking a planned psychological reaction in other people. This is a lot of times where you get the, if you say anything that's critical of anybody other than somebody that looks exactly like you, you know, you're part of the, you're part of the, the ism and phobe group, you can't say anything negative about them or all of a sudden you're, you're denying their existence type talk. 
But they say various techniques are used, right? And listen to some of these. They're aimed at influencing a target audience's value system, belief system, emotions, motives, reasoning, or behavior. Now, you're going to call me crazy, but doesn't that sound a lot like leftists today? I mean, in reality. What do, what do leftists, they have a weird belief system. They're all about emotions. They're all about motives. They have very low reasoning, and their reasoning's all screwed up, and their behavior is in, generally, is in general crazy. They say it's used to in, induce confessions or reinforce attitudes and behaviors favorable to the original uh, originator's objectives and are sometimes com combined with black ops or false flag tactics. Now, we've, we've talked a lot about that, as, uh, and I won't get into all of it, but there's definitely some things that feel very false flaggy about them recently. It's also used to destroy the morale of enemies through tactics that aim to dep depress troops, psychological states. I think that's pretty accurate if you think about it, as a, as a, especially as a white dude, but just as a dude in general, a straight guy in general. It's we're not hiring. We, we're not, we don't want you. You're part of the patriarchy. You're bad. You're evil. You're this. You're that. You're all the bad things. That after a while will demoralize a man. To where guys say, you know, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna go to college anymore. And we see now men are going to college at a 20% rate less than women. We see guys tapping out of the workforce. They say, you know what, I'm, I just screw it. I'm not gonna be involved anymore. So in many cases, and and numbers of young people that are tapping out, I mean, literally tapping out, are much higher um, than they've been in the past. So there is some success to this. They say target audiences can be governments, organizations, or groups, and individuals. It's not limited to soldiers. Civilians of foreign territories can also be targeted by technology and media. Right? They're targeted by technology and media so as to cause an effect on the government of their country. So we've got, we've, we've got um, the media doing it right now against men, against you know, straight people. We've got social media doing it. We've got movies doing it. We've got commercials and brands, TV, TV commercials doing it, calling us all the names. And I, I, I do think it has an effect on a lot of people, um, all of it negative, of course. And it, it's negative for, for men because they feel that, you know, they're, they're on the outcast. And it's negative for the people that are now castigating against men or hating on men because they've listened and Either they're lying, but they feel it's the right thing to say, or they really believe it, which means we're in a lot of trouble. Um, they go down through the history of it and things like that, and I have no interest in that. Uh, I mean, it's an interesting topic, but not, not for this video. And so when you, when you listen to these women, let me pull this down, my audio down a little bit, so I don't blow your eardrums out. Stuck in a forest with a man or bear? Bear. Man is scary. Um, Men are scary, but bears aren't? With a bear. Well, I've heard about bears. They don't always attack you, right? And but do men always attack you? Like, this interview is a male. Is he attacking you right now? But she's like, well, bears don't always attack. But, but you're implying men do? Unless you, like, fuck with them. So maybe a bear. <laughs> Prob depends what man, but probably a bear. 100% a bear, which is, like, terrifying to say, but... Definitely a bear. Some men are very scary out there. Some men. So the odds of a man being scary and doing something bad to her is higher than a bear. More dangerous than a bear. Either these women really don't, they've watched too many Disney movies or they don't understand bears' true nature. And granted, it's not like bears are roaming around trying to hunt people. But I don't know about you, but you get near... If it's after salmon season and they're all stuffed full, getting ready to go to hibernate, you're good. But if it's mama bear time and uh, the cubs are about, like I avoid hiking during certain seasons because of mama bears. I just don't, I just don't understand. Like, do they actually believe this or not? Well, I want to read some headlines to you. And <clears throat> what this is telling me is either one of two things. You know, I did a video a little while ago that was stupid or liar. Um, and, and it's, are, are, are women genuinely this stupid? 
or are they lying on purpose? And this this is kind of the same, except except here, I wonder if women are, are stupid or or they're doing this to virtue signal to everybody else that they're they feel the same way as the other feminists. And this is the popular opinion to have, and this is the right opinion and to have. And and so they're going to just do stupid things at the detriment of their own safety and health. And that's what I talked about yesterday. These women that are, you know, they're protesting and they're they're all in on the DEI and all the rest of the crap as their companies fold underneath them and the women are cheering like, ah, I'm out of a job, but at least we took down this this misogynistic patriarchal company. It's like, lady, that was giving you your paycheck, you dim bulb. And they're like, yeah, who cares? Patriarchy. <laughs> it's like, are you stupid or are you just like, what's going on? Well, here from our favorite mouth breather in, in Australia, Jana Hawking. Now, Jana Hawking, as you guys know, I read all her articles or most of them because they're so stupid. It's amazing that she can, like, she is such a window licker. I'm just saying, man, she's such a window licker. Her takes are so bad. She says, this is irrefutable proof women are meant to have multiple lovers at the same time. Notice she doesn't say multiple people or that, no, it's, it's women. Women should have multiple people and the men should not, even though that goes contrary to pretty much everything we know about everything. I'm going to read down through this. <laughs> this, is from, this is from today. Guys, I don't know about monogamy. Have we been hoodwinked? Seriously. As someone who's been single for a fair chunk of my 30s, I've got to witness many, witness many things in my friends' relationships, family relationships, and my relationships. Close friends who are kind, considerate people with good heads on their shoulders have been caught up in affairs, or at least, the, or at the, at the very least, they flirted with the idea. And we're not talking sleazy dudes having a midlife crisis, but everyday people, nurses, teachers, plenty of office workers. Well, we know the majority of nurses and teachers are women. So I think, and she's saying close friends of hers. Well, I, I mean, if it was like a gay close friend with her, that doesn't really count. And if it was a good looking close friend with hers, I'm pretty sure she probably slept with him because that's what she does. So she's probably talking about women. And she says, before I know, before I get a flood of angry messages from people saying affairs ruin family, let me state for the record, I know I've lived it. Well, she's never been married so how did she live it? Did she sleep with a married man? Well, if you go back and look at her article history, spoiler alert, yes. She's been with married dudes before. She's been the one to ruin the family. But she doesn't care, see, because she's not, it's not her family. She said, but that only firms my resolve more. When people are risking stable family lives for a connection, however brief with someone else, it makes me wonder if we are genetically wired to stay with just one person. We're brought up believing that monogamy is a moral correct way to live our lives, but are we designed for it? Yes, you are designed for it, and I'll tell you why. Now, she's going to she's gonna go in a different direction with this, but I'm going to tell you why, okay? Is historically, let's take humans, for example. If a woman was promiscuous, no, we didn't have DNA tests. If a woman was promiscuous and she got pregnant, no man would claim the child because she's a promiscuous woman and no man wants her. She's low value. And then she would try to say, well, of course, the highest value guy, it's his, and no one would believe her. And so she'd end up being stuck alone. When you look at wildlife, and I'll just take an example, there's, there's families of, of monkeys. I don't know if they're apes or monkeys, but... I've read this before about, about uh, chimpanzees, I think it was technically, as well as lions and other pack animals where even though there's a, a strong male lead that leads the, the fam, family unit, depending on what it is, females will sometimes sneak off and be with other males, whether they are lower value, whether they're just younger and they're not the, you know, the lead lion or whatever, and then they'll get pregnant and then they sneak back. And hopefully that male will not realize that 
it's not his cub, and he protects it along with all the cubs that are his. And they do this, to, you know, it's something that I think is hardwired into a lot of animals to keep the genetic line uh, not becoming too stagnant and you end up getting, you know, genetic errors and things like that. You do need to, to keep the DNA kind of mixed up and things like that, right? But that's using like base lizard brain emotion. That's not using higher reasoning and higher logic. And that's where I think the PSYOP, portion of this comes in is that either by society or feminism or all this kind of weird indoctrination over the last 20, 30 years of telling women, don't like go out and you can be with any man you want to. And, and even if you're a single mom, you're going to find a man that will respect you and he'll love you and he'll, he'll treat you. So just go out and you do you don't. And, and, and if you don't find that man, the big daddy government will take care of you. And, and so in many ways, it is kind of a psyop or a psy war where men are being replaced by government and other things. I, I think this is true. Okay, so, so she says the females may have anywhere between one and three or up to three, and the males may have one or two. Okay, so that's males and females having multiple partners, right? But she says proof women are meant to have multiple at the same time. She doesn't mention anything about the males. Why not? Because she doesn't want the males to. She's trying to convince herself, I'm going to have three chads that I can sleep with, and I can feel okay about this. And, and he's going to be having, he's going to be sleeping with other high value, or quote unquote, high value or attractive women, whatever. Easy women is really the truth of it. And that's okay too. And that's okay too. She's trying to convince herself that what she's doing is okay. And that's, that's the PSYOP part of this. That's the, um, I'm being brainwashed by society that tells me that this is okay. And, and what happens time after time after time after time? These women end up pregnant and then single moms and then nobody wants them. Or the man that will want them or will take them is low value. He's just the provider. And thus she isn't attracted to him. But she writes, I'm being, beginning to believe that open relationship is key to a better relationship. That's because the only option she has is an open relationship. That's, all, that's her only option. She could find a man that would marry her and be with her and support her. And, but she doesn't, she's not attracted to him because she's been told she can have it all. That's the psyops part. That's the feminism part. And ultimately, it'll end up, it'll end up messing her up. And, and for proof, now this girl, I was going to save this towards the end of the video, but this kind of does get to my point here. Uh, she's on, so now this has music to it, so I have to pause it. I forgot to drop this in an AI file and yank the music out. But she's replying to this Joey's comment because she's a single mom. So, and, and she's not bad looking. She's not bad looking because she's young. And he says, no man wants to raise another man's child and be the cleanup guy. Pass. That's his response. Now, I want you to listen to, because she responds to him. Listen to what she says versus what all the comments are under the video, because somebody pulled this up and they started scrolling through the comments. This comment, this comment right here. Um... I really don't think that he's speaking for all men. Okay. So if you're just listening, it's a video of her in her car and she says, I don't think he's uh, speaking for all men. And this is where the music kicks in. So I'm going to mute it from here on out. I think this is where the music kicks in. Let me see. Um, because I know that there will be somebody that steps up one day um, to be some sort of father figure. Okay. So she says, I know somebody will step up one day to be some sort of father figure for my kid. I'm going to mute it here. Um, now, there's 6,973 comments. And these are just right in a row. This is not cherry picking. And if you see right here, the likes, 2,600, 1,000, 1,800. He's speaking for me. 
The next comment, oof, you're going to have a harsh reality check. The next comment, agree with him 100%. The next comment, I bet she didn't see the comment section going this way. Uh, he's absolutely correct. 100% agree with him. He's speaking for me. I raised two stepkids. Never, ever again, ever. Uh, someone else, he's speaking for us, can confirm. Uh, true, I ain't raising somebody, uh, someone's F trophy. Speaking for me. He's sure speaking for me. Yep, that's every guy. He's spot on. Guys, this is one after, and these, it's not cherry picked. This is just straight up scrolling down through. Somewhere along the line, women have either, it's other women convincing other women. And I think the original, like who started the convincing? That's feminism. That's the, that's the Marxist commie, you know, gobbledygook they've got in here that is, that is convincing these women that men bad, government awesome, big government awesome, they'll take care of me, do whatever I want, no regrets in life, and here we go. But then, then I, I'm like, well, is it a PSYOP or is it just stupid people? Uh, L, uh, L.I. law student goes boy sober after feeling deflated by the dating scene was so miserable. This woman, she, okay, so she's 28. She's from Long Island and she's giving up dating. Is this PSYOP or is it stupid? She's given date, up dating. She said she went on four dates a month last year, which is 40, what, uh, four dates a month. So that's 48 dates. And she said she was trying to find a boyfriend out of fear. I felt I had to keep dating and it didn't matter whether men were good or not. Notice she doesn't say good looking or not. She says if they were good or not. She doesn't care if they're good. She wanted to sleep with them because they're hot and they had money and they were tall. She added, it was just something I feared that if I didn't pursue straight away, I'd miss out on something. Yes, you're going to slip, miss out on finding a good man in your 20s, and you're going to keep going till you hit the wall like all the other women do. She said she'd been dating in earnest since she was 16. I got news for you. I have news for you. If you were seriously dating from 16 on, you would have found 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 men that would marry you or love on you and make you special. But you're a spoiled... You're a total bitch. That's right, you're, you're, you're a spoiled bitch. I guarantee you. And how do I, how can I guarantee you this? Because listen to this. She's been dating in earnest since she was 16, even going on luxury New York City dinner dates and private jet trips to the Bahamas at times. She was a weekend play toy. The, these rich and good-looking and dashing men were like, yep, because I had to put in zero effort. I can, I can look at her and smile, and her legs open like an oyster after being boiled. And, and so it's easy. And so she basically been tricking herself out four times a month for years. She said, dating in New York City, the guys were dating models. So I'd question how I could make myself more attractive. She wanted the men that were dating models. She's not a model. She wanted, and she doesn't make, she's not rich, but she wanted those men. How did she get the same men? Spreading the legs. So she, she is as pretty as a model, but she could, she could keep in good shape. And she could spread the legs and she'd get the attention. And it happened over and over and over and over and over and over. And she can't keep any of them. And she's like, this is exhausting. I am so tired of being a whore. At one point, Galuzzo said she was dating someone who took her to the south of France and she was miserable. My ex-boyfriend was very wealthy and took me to a lot of great places. And that validation from my peers felt good. But I can say now that I lived life crying my eyes out in a yacht in the south of France because I was so miserable. Yes, because you were probably on that yacht with four other women and he was banging every other one of them every other night and you just felt like you were getting tricked out. You know why? Because she's probably getting tricked out. Because she ain't pretty enough to be dating loads of 
like millionaires that can fly her to the south of France on a yacht. This is the type of girl that suddenly is like, I don't know, just one weekend I was in Dubai getting tens of thousands of dollars and I had a bunch of poop on my chest and face. That's this girl. She said at the beginning of 2024, she realized it finally clicked. Brilliant. I found myself planning weddings after knowing someone for a week, she said. She's an alpha widow. She's an alpha widow. Oh, he's rich. He's handsome. Uh, we just had, I don't know, we just did it four times this past weekend. I'm in love. And then she's like, hey, we're going to go to dinner this weekend. And he goes, who this? New phone. Who this? Doesn't even remember. Paints her face and then walks off into the sunset set. She said, understanding that wasn't a healthy mindset, she decided to go boy sober and she's never been happier. And now she's like an alpha widow. Guys, I, I, I'm doing the same stories every fucking day. It's because these women are stupid or there's some, this feminism psyop thing that tells women, I don't know, that they're, that they're perfect and wonderful and deserve it all. And they're, they're going to do this till women end up on the end of a rope from being miserable. And the whole time, the whole time guys are like, please stop, please stop, please stop. No man wants to raise another man's child. Uh, I think he doesn't know what's 6,973 comments. Nope. That's every guy. That's us. That's us. That's us. That's us. And you know what? She'll turn right around and in another video say, men need to step up, take care of me and my kid. Men are weak. Real men, real men. And she'll try to shame them. And there, there's going to be some girl out there that sees this and says, wow, she's stupid. What a stupid, she blew it. And then seven months later, she's going to be like, I'm pregnant. Oh, no. He won't call me back. Oh, no. But he's hot. So I'm going to have his kid. And I'll, but I'm different. I'll find a guy that'll support me because I'm not her. I'm her. I'm slight. I'm blonde instead of brunette. I'm younger. I'm prettier. I'm this. I'm that. Oh, I'm 35 and a single mom and I got an 18 year old. And no man wants me. Over and over and over again. It's, it's like I'm in a Twilight episode. episode. And, and it reminds me, where it's almost like you watch a woman shutting her hand in the car door. She's like, oh my God, I just broke four of my fingers. Shut, shut my hand in the car door. God, that's awful. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to go to the doctor and put a cast on it. But before I do that, I'm going to go shut my hand in a car door. Wait a minute. Why are you going to? You just broke your hand. You said it hurts. It does. But I'm going to go shut my hand in a car door again because this time it'll be different. It won't break my fingers. It'll fix them. And you're like, that's not how any of this works. Go to the doctor and get a cat. Oh, my God, this is horrible. What happened? I shut my hand in the car door again, and my broken fingers are broke even worse. Well, stop doing that. Go to the doctor and get it fixed. I will. Okay, I will. First, let me, fish. Let me shut my hand in the car door again. <laughs> Don't do that. And in the end, you have a bunch of women walk around like, I don't understand what's going on. Why is every men's car doors suck? Car doors are evil. Car doors are so stupid. Why do car doors do this to me? It's like, you do it to yourselves. I'm, I'm in a twilight zone. It's just. And for five years, I've just been on the same. Women, stop it. Men, avoid them. Women stop it, men avoid them. And what happens? You got someone in our own com someone in our own community, fresh, Walter. And what's he he does the same thing we tell men not to do. You went out and banged up a, 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 a woman of the night and knocked her up. Maybe, 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 maybe he didn't. Okay, but you were still introducing mommy to a lady of the night. You still told a, a woman, a lady of the night, you loved her. It's on video. But isn't that what we've been saying for years? Don't do this, guys. 
make better decisions. And then he goes out and does it. And then we tell women, women stop doing this. And they go, okay. And then they go out and keep doing it. What? What? Sigh up. Everybody's just, or stupid. Everybody's gone crazy. I'm going to leave it there for YouTube, for you kids on YouTube. I'm going to head over. Well, we're going to head over. We're going to stay over here on Locals and Rumble, and we're going to talk about some more shit because it's funny and you can't hear it because you're stuck on YouTube. Thank you.